is going on ladies and gentlemen my name is Twigger and I have another high ELO commentary game for you guys I know it has been quite some time since I've done a commentary but I finally got into a great game with Liquid X Special and Liquid Keith the new bot lane for Team Liquid um, as we know Piglet has kind of been benched for the couple weeks that uh, I believe it was week 5 and now week 6 um, he's going to be benched and Liquid Keith is going to be coming in and playing with X Special had a fairly good showing um, in the previous week. So this is actually a game that they're warming up for right now because the uh, the LCS is on right now and they're playing, I believe, the third match of today. Um, so this is actually them warming up for that match. So it should be very cool. They should be kind of on their game and really trying out some strategies. And as we can see, Corky and Annie, X Special playing Annie is absolutely terrifying because of those flash tippers and gauges. Definitely a lot of space to make plays for X Special because um, he is, he's been playing the game for so long that a shot caller like X Special and somebody who can jump in and make plays for his team. He has so much game knowledge to share with the team. And with a playmaker like Annie, I think he's going to do really, really well. But we're just going to put it on directed cam here and just try to see what is going on on the rest of the map. It looks like we got a Cassiopeia versus an Orianna. Very difficult lane to kind of call because both of them have very good kind of sustained constant damage until they hit six, in which case Orianna has a huge amount of burst damage. Um, but we have a Riven in the jungle, which is very cool. Smash D. Or Smash HD? I don't know. Smashed. Smashed. There we go. That ah, we got it. And also Lee Sin in the jungle. Um, I'm very excited to see a Lee Sin jungle because when you watch Challenger Lee Sins, you normally see some pretty fantastic plays. So definitely look out for him to do some pretty epic stuff this game. And then in the top lane, we've got our standard fairly bruiser-like champions. Rumble versus Maokai. Probably not going to be a lot of things happening up there. Just really going to be like two wet noodles hitting each other for a long period of time. The action, I believe, is going to be in the bottom lane and in the mid lane. Because we have two very aggressive AD focused junglers who are probably going to be less tanky. They're going to rely on more of their top laners to be the tanks. Um, well, at least in the case of the red team. But in the blue team, they're probably going to be relying on the tankiness of the Orianna ball on the ribbon. Um, plus a good equalizer. You know, you can make a lot happen with a good equalizer and a good shockwave. Two ultimates that can really affect the game. And of course, if people get low enough, then you've got the Graves ultimate to finish them off or the Riven ultimate to finish them off. Um, just looking at the team comps, they're both very kind of standard team comps. There's nothing really that far out there that we're, uh, we're not used to seeing. Um, fairly kind of LCS teams, I would almost call them, just because they are currently the very strong champions in the game. Um, I know that uh, Graves was actually being played a lot more in the EU scene. Uh, hasn't really made its way into the North American scene quite yet. Um, a lot of people are still kind of going for the, um, like the Corkies and I'm trying to think. The Jinx has been played a couple times. The Callista, especially, the NA scene has really grabbed onto. The Callista has been so good for North Americans and it hasn't really touched on the EU scene quite yet. It did a little bit last week, or even, sorry, this week actually. But um, hopefully we'll see a little bit more Callista as well. But excited to see a Graves. Very, very strong champion with great amounts of burst. A little bit of damage going up in the top lane. But once again, it's just going to be a bunch of wet noodles hitting each other. But looks like we might have the first gank of the game going down in this mid lane. Looks like not actually because this lovely ward ended up spotting out the lovely Riven. And it looks like they might try to uh, get a little bit of an engagement off on her. Cassiopeia is going to get some poison down on her. Didn't actually land the poison, but there we go. The slow poison is going to land. And Lee Sin and Cassiopeia are now on the chase. Rumble is going to come to support the Riven, though. Nothing going to happen from that one. Just going to kind of continue farming up in the jungle. Looks like they are pinging down onto the, uh, the Lee Sin, though. But once again, nothing going to happen from that. Oh, he is being in a pretty bad spot, though. The slow landing. The Riven is now going to jump in. Flash having to be burned by the Lee Sin. And it looks like the uh, Cassiopeia tried to come in there just to push them away. But Flash burn definitely worthwhile for that uh, lovely... What am I trying to say here? The top laner, Rumble. I was like, what the hell is his name? Jumble? Tumble? Fumble? Rumble. There you go. But uh, he is going to be able to do some damage to the Maokai. But the thing is, every few um, casts that end up happening in that uh, that top lane, Maokai is just going to be able to heal up with his auto attack. That passive is very, very good for sustain, especially when you're not facing somebody with like constant sustained good damage. Um, Rumble does tend to kind of fall off on his damage. Once that Flame Spitter is done, you really don't have much damage. So all Maokai has to do is wait for those abilities to be cast, get an auto attack off, and that is going to be him pretty much back to full HP. But looks like he did go B, wanted to go and pick up some items. It looks like he's going for um, that fairly quick Rod of Ages. But looks like we finally do have a fight down in the bot lane. Keith taking a lot of damage. Ignite has already gone down onto the graves. No flashes have been burned quite yet, so we could still have a lot of fight here. 
But um, especially and Keith both very, very low. Another fight going up in the top lane. Rumble being caught out by the Maokai and the Lee Sin. The Chilling Smite going down, and this is going to be a kill. First Blood going to the Maokai on the red team. I think the Lee Sin actually let the Maokai have that one. Probably not a bad idea, because the faster you can get that Maokai to his Rod of Ages, um, the faster he's going to be able to kind of dominate his lane and just become that... Uh, tanky, unkillable force that also does damage to your team. It's a very nice item to have on somebody like a Maokai. So we're already seeing a 300 gold lead for the red team. That first blood definitely paying dividends. Um, Maokai not choosing to go back quite yet. He looks like he's just going to be pushing up this top lane. Now he's deciding to be. So Rumble will miss a few minions. But it looks like we do now have Keith back in this bot lane. It looks like he didn't go B. Uh, Expecial did, but it looks like Keith did not. Um, wonder what he's trying to do here. Just going to see his gold. Keith is currently sitting at 1700 gold. So he can go back and probably pick up... A, I would assume he's going to pick up something like a Sheen and maybe Boots or... Um, a longsword or something like that. Yeah, there you go. So Sheen, longsword, and a pink ward. Maokai now having a flash away from the Rumble. Rumble coming back and doing a world of damage to the Maokai. Misses the Harpoon, though. Gets one of the Harpoons, but this is probably going to be a dead Maokai. There we go. Rumble coming back with force. What items did he have there? Oh, uh, you know what? Actually, this is what I haven't done. I haven't done a high yellow commentary in so long that I forgot to even move the damn portraits. Forgot you could even do that. Jungler goes up here. Support goes down there. And the AD carry goes there. There we go. Now everybody can see what's going on and they can start comparing people. So yeah, as I was saying previously though, I actually love doing high elo commentaries, but with the new matchmaking system that it's very difficult to get into these games to watch people play and to, uh, to get into these games early enough that you can see what's going on. Um, normally you end up missing a couple kills and there's no way that you can rewind further So I finally got into a game that I can do a nice little commentary on and hopefully we have a very exciting game But already fairly even only a hundred gold separates these two teams um, Just looking down at the CS numbers a little bit here 60 to 52 fairly even in the top lane both with one kill apiece But it looks like the ribbon is gonna be able to catch out this Cassiopeia great shockwave ends up knocking the Cassiopeia out and that's gonna be one very very easy kill There's so much CC on the Orianna and the Riven when you land a Shockwave. Riven could just hold her down for so long. That ultimate just being a nice little execute to take that kill down. So one kill goes over to the Riven and the death falling for the Cassiopeia. But once again, back to the CS. Riven leading the Lee Sin by just two CS. But it looks like the actually is going to be a fight up in the top lane. The kick going down, but they are walking a long time in that equalizer. I don't know if they're going to be able to catch up to this rumble, but the, well, the, uh, the sapling is going to be able to slow him down, but the resonating strike did miss. Especially not trying to engage onto the graves, but it doesn't look like much is going to happen in this bot lane. A lot of damage going down, but nobody going to die. Rumble is now in a very interesting position because Cassiopeia is now here. He's going to try to just turn in on this one, try to do some damage, I guess, but he is going to die. Piggy Azalea. <laughs> <laughs> is going to be picking up that kill, but a lot of damage going down in the bot lane. The ignite is onto the graves. An auto attack, an extra auto attack with the disintegration is going to be enough to pick off. Sorry, disintegrate. I think disintegration. Um, that is going to be one kill going onto X special. Great stuns. Didn't even have to use the tibbers, which is very interesting. But um, the graves also used the heal. But I believe that he used the heal while the ignite was still ticking on him. So of course, it's doing 50% less healing. So he could not survive the damage that was coming out of X special. Um, X special choosing. To to go for the more support early start but I wonder if he's going to be building more into a mage support uh, a little bit later on into the game but going for the Moby Boots really wants to probably roam with his stun try to affect the map elsewhere and Keith is now going back as well but as we can see in the mid lane Cassiopeia is starting to stack up that tier of the goddess I don't know how much he stacked that up 222 so making his way slowly but with that E when you land the poison on people you stack that up so quickly it's almost like the pounce from Nidalee um, you really stack up your tier very, very quickly, and you get a nice AP boost out of it when you end up finishing your Archangel Staff and then your Seraph's Embrace. But on the other end of the token, um, we've got Orianna who's going for that fairly standard build, trying to finish off her Athenes on Holy Grail, and then probably finish off her Sork Boots. But Riven now going to catch out X Special here. He does not have his stun available. Now he finally does. Going to stun up the, uh, the... Oh no! The Cassiopeia missed her ultimate! Just barely out of range. Would have actually saved X Special's life if she had gotten that one, but just a little bit out of range. And Riven just gets to flash and jump right in on Annie's face. So X Special ends up going down 1-1-0. One, one, and zero. And it looks like they're trying to really gank this Rumble, trying to really set him back, but nothing really coming from it. Now the Janna is going up to that top lane, so not much is going to be happening. But once again, okay, the... It looks like the ultimate from Rumble being set out. The Equalizer not really landing where he wanted it to be, but now here comes the Janna trying to kind of ward off this little gank here. 
Gonna manage to do a little bit of damage to the Maokai and not really to the Lee Sim, but Janna there for the disengage means that Rumble will not be going down, and he is just putting out so much damage. He doesn't even have his haunting guys yet, he just strictly has the Sork Boots. But here comes the Shockwave from the Orianna. One more auto attack, flash auto attack. I guess he thought that he was gonna get it with the damage of his Shockwave, but just barely not enough damage, so has to flash, get that auto attack off, and get that kill. But the stun coming down from X-Special, a Timber's coming down as well, a lot of damage from that Phosphorus Bomb. Also, Graves going very, very low, but not enough to take him down. Riven here as well. Janna is still in the mid lane, kind of roaming the map a little bit, being that nuisance support. But uh, she's moving fairly quickly for not even having Moby Boots, so definitely using that Janna passive of movement speed to kind of get her moving and try to make something happen in this game. Um, X Special now trying to catch out the Janna, but as we can see, we've got the Riven right here, and now X Special is in a very interesting spot. A lot of damage coming down from the Corky, though. X Special trying to run away from this Riven. Is Keith going to be able to deal with this one? Maokai TPing down. This is going to be one dead Riven smash going down. It looks like Janna might be in trouble now, too. The um, Q from the Maokai is going to land, but it's not going to be enough. The slow was good to take some damage down, but not actually enough to take down the Janna. And now it looks like Keith going back to his good old fight with the Graves, but Graves has barely no man. And it looks like he's going to try to turn onto the Quirky. Not going to be enough to take him down. The flash is being used. And now it looks like Maokai probably just going to be able to pick this one up. Going to throw a sapling. Did not get the damage. So it's just going to be a kill for Corky. Sadly, Maokai couldn't get any damage in there to get an assist. But while that was all going on, Lee Sin was just standing in the dragon pit, taking down that dragon. First dragon of the game going to the red team at 13 minutes in. Definitely not a bad time to be getting a dragon, but definitely a slow start to the objective control game. But as we can see, it's still only about a hundred gold lead. Five to five is the his current kill score, and no turrets have gone down yet. This has just been kind of a an all-out fight fest. And we're just gonna kind of go down here. The, one of the big differences I can see right now, there's two differences actually. 128 to the 104 Oriana over top of the Cassiopeia. And then on the other side. Corky, 106 to 88 of the Graves. Keith currently doing very well. 2-0 and 1 with 107 CS. Has that Trinity Force, so that's going to be a really nice mid-game spike. While uh, Graves is just sitting on his BF sword. So it looks like Lee Sin gifting over the blue buff to the Cassiopeia. And X Special waiting to get that stun down. Does now have his Tibbers available and his stun is now available. Flash is almost up. They might very well wait for that Flash before they make some engagement happen. But once again, Rumble just doing so much damage and still only having those Sork Boots for that Magic Pen. Can't believe how much damage he's going to do once he gets his Haunting Guys. He's just going to be very difficult to deal with. But there's a Pink Ward. Interesting place for a Pink Ward um, that must signal uh, Keith and X Special that they're trying to set up a gank. Because normally, you would not put a Pink Ward in that brush because you it gets checked so darn easily. But it looks like they might be trying to bait them with that ward. Riven is here in the waiting. Oh no, I don't, come on, I don't want to go over here. Looks like a lot of damage going down onto the Orianna, though. They are going to follow up. The Shockwave definitely lands. Does a lot of damage, but not going to be enough to kill anybody. And now I want to go down to this bot lane to see if this Riven is going to make anything happen. She very well could. Keith is going to walk up a little bit. Expecial, I feel, sees something going on here. The stun is going to land onto the Riven. A lot of damage going down also. But now X Special doesn't have a stun. He still needs two more charges in order to get that stun up. His Tibbers is still available, but look at the damage going down onto the Janna. Keith doing a very good job with the Trinity Force to force them to back off just because of how much damage he's putting out. And knowing that X Special still has Tibbers definitely throws them through a loop that they can't continue that engagement or else uh, somebody is definitely at risk of just getting absolutely obliterated by the burst sandwich of Corky and Annie. So X Special tossing a pink ward just up in this brush. Just want to know where the Riven is and where she's going to be going. Does manage to take down the Scuttle Crab. It's uh, a little bit of a ways until Dragon, I believe, though. So not really going to be waiting for that one. The Flash having to be burned from the Janna. The Ignite getting used by Annie. Tibbers was used, but wasn't enough to take down the Janna. But once again, a lot of damage going down onto Keith. Looks like the Graves does not have his Flash available. So it's not going to be enough to take down Keith right now. Once again, Janna coming in, trying to shield up the Graves to allow him to do a little bit more damage and to increase his survivability, so that way the rockets from Corky don't kill him. If Keith isn't careful, he could just get dashed and blown up by the Buckshot. Oh, the heal baits are used, but no! Nice damage coming out of the Graves, and this is going to be Annie dying. Hi, I'm Ming is going to take that one down on the Janna. X-Special going down from that nice little W from Janna. She spent the exact amount of time that she needed just kind of coming in and out of that fight to make sure that Graves survived and that she could add a little bit of damage, a little bit of CC 
Um, I thought it was a very good heal bait from the Corky, but that last auto attack from Graves, I believe it was a crit because he just blew up. Uh, the rest of the health bar of Corky. But once again, here's Rumble. Already finished off his Leandri's Torment. So he's going to be doing a lot of damage. Looks like Lee Sin trying to get in here. Trying to do some damage, but not really getting anything. The Shockwave is going to whiff completely. The Flash was used to get in range of that Shockwave. And she just did not land that whatsoever. So the mid laners both having a little bit of issues landing their clutch ultimates. And those are two very, very important ultimates. There we go. The engage from the Cassiopeia using that ultimate to try to do some damage. The Ignite is down from the Orianna. And that is going to be enough to kill the Cassiopeia. She took a turret shot and sadly was not able to get that Q poison off onto the Orianna. So she is going to take the kill, get the blue buff. And it looks like Annie is coming in, trying to pick up this kill, but the shield coming in from the Orion. I don't know if Annie's going to actually have enough. There we go. Kill being secured, but also in the Baron pit, Riven picking up the Lee Sin using that ultimate. Very easy secured kill for her. And Annie picking up her second kill of the game. Way to go, X Special. So these Moby Boot roams from X Special have just been so, so good right now. Um, and now he's coming back into the lane. He does have his Tibbers available, plus a stun. So I think this is going to be one very dead Graves. Misses his Tibbers, though. Oh, X Special. Come on, buddy. You got to know that he's going to dive out of that one. But um, luckily, they do still manage to pick up the kill. Very close stuff, though. If they had screwed that up completely, you whiff your Tibbers. Man, that's uh, that's definitely not something that X Special wanted to do there. Um, hopefully, he's getting these kind of early game jitters out. But looks like Keith is probably going to die here. Yep, that's going to be one dead Corky. And Annie is not far behind if the Riven's mobility says anything about it. it looks like they're not going to try to dive this one. Leeson is coming down to try to support X Special. But going to be just a simple disengage from the Riven and the Janna. And that's going to be the end of the fight in the bot lane. But now we have a 10 to 8 kill score with a, a 1,000 gold lead. So that 100 gold lead for the red team is now turned into a 1,000 gold lead for the blue team we do have dragon coming up in 20 seconds um i wonder if either team is really going to be mobilizing for that right now um looks like lee sin making sure that he gets the ward coverage is going to also take down the scuttle crab which is the perfect time to take this thing out because you want the vision while the buff is available that little speed shrine can mean the world for somebody like a cassiopeia to run in and land her ultimate or the annie to get in range of a timber stun but Maokai heading down as well. It looks like they're trading lanes, but wow, that did not work out for the Cassiopeia at all. Rumble taking her down. The Leandri's Torment is just allowing the Rumble to wreck people up in this top lane. Cassiopeia not really having the best of games. 157 CS, doing well in the farm department, but 1-4-1 and one is her current score. Definitely shouldn't be overly happy with that one, but... The main focus here is on Liquid Keith and Liquid X Special. Um, they're not having too bad of a lane. 3, 2, and 1 on Corky and 2, 3, and 2 on Annie. And compared to the 2, 3, 1 of Graves and the 1, 0, 4 of Janna, it's been a very good bottom lane for both teams. But here comes the damage onto the Janna. The shield is going to land. Great Phosphorus Bomb bringing Janna down to about a quarter HP. She's just going to have to start chucking pots as soon as she can. Well, sorry, and by pots, I mean biscuits, because she did go into the support tree. But the Tibbers is still available. It's always amazing to see how much damage these guys are throwing out without even utilizing the Tibbers. Um, X Special is being very uh, conservative with that ultimate. Really wants to use it at, uh, at a, an appropriate time rather than just to try to get a kill. So there's a stun, and once again, half HP for the Graves. And now it's nearing a quarter. Great rockets coming out of Keith. And that's going to be the first turret of the game in favor of the red team. Keith and X Special really holding it down, landing a lot of really clutch rockets and making sure that the Graves was going to be completely downed for the remainder of that siege. Looks like Riven might try to get in here, but X Special is going to have something to say about that. Probably going to charge up his stun and try to make sure that the Riven can't get in for a steal because the execute damage of Riven is substantial. Looks like X Special is going to be able to pick up the Riven, but the Cassiopeia taking a lot of damage. Rumble is now coming in here. 1500 health is currently on the Dragon. I don't know if they're going to continue this one, but it looks like the Seraph's Embrace Shield being used by the Cassiopeia is going to keep her alive for just long enough, and they're going to take down the Rumble. The Disengage coming from the Janna, but Keith is going to chase that one down. Great Phosphorus Bomb for damage, and that is going to be the first First ace of the game. That was a five for nothing, and the Maokai wasn't even there. Dragon secured by the red team, Lee Sin, and that is going to be the second dragon of the game, the second, tur sorry, third turret of the game now that two got taken down. One in the top lane, one in the mid lane, and now it looks like they're pushing down for that second tier turret in the mid lane, 
and this is going to be another turret just securing themselves an absolutely huge gold lead of about 4,000 gold very nicely played from the red team great picks and it all started with making sure that that graze was poked out for that entire siege they got that turret they went down got the uh the dragon and then they just absolutely steamrolled turrets so there we go four turrets down for the red team to the zero of the blue team they really need to work on their sieges because they need to get some money back in order to fight this team the maokai is at six stacks of his rod of ages so he's becoming quite tanky already a lot of health on him and also more ap um, they're really going to need to rely on their ultimates for this blue team. They really want to get into a team fight where they land a great uh, shockwave with the equalizer down and then the graves ultimate with the riven ultimate to get that execute done. Um, if they can get that kind of wombo combo, which their team has, um, I really would fear for the red team because there's not a lot. Oh man, but the flash coming in for the Maokai. A great ultimate from the Cassiopeia, but not going to be enough to take anybody down. The Shockwave being used only hitting the tanky Maokai, but here comes the Riven, and this is going to be enough to take down the Maokai. Riven's ultimate was used. So a couple ultimates being used there. The Gra Sorry, the Riven and the Orianna. But the Graves coming in using his ultimate on the Cassiopeia, not going to be enough to take her down. The Seraph Shield was still on cooldown, but. Did not really matter. Wasn't enough damage anyways. The Flash having to come out from the Cassiopeia to try to get away from the Riven damage. But Lee Sin is now here. Jumping over. Using that safeguard over to the ward. Going to now be chased by the Riven. I don't think that Riven could fight the Lee Sin right now. Considering that she doesn't have her ultimate available. I think he is going to try to pick this fight. It's going to depend on how they play this one out. That is going to be a kill for the Lee Sin. So it looks like I was right there. But while all this was going on. Oh the Flash Timber is coming out of the Annie. Not going to be enough currently to take down the damage from Graves. But there is Keith roaming up from taking the second tier bot lane turret. Roaming up getting the kill onto the Graves. He is now sitting at 6, 2, and 2. Definitely making a name for himself in this game. And I really hope that he brings this into the LCS when he's playing today. Um, as I was mentioning, guys, this is kind of like the warm-up game for them. But it looks like I'm just going to talk about this first. The teleport coming down onto the Tibbers. Maokai is going to come down here. Liquid X Special is going to die. The burn from the Leandries is enough to take him down. And also the Ignite was onto X Special. So that's going to be one dead Annie. But as I was saying, guys, they are actually playing in probably about an hour and a bit. They're the third game today. And the first game is going on right now between, I believe, Cloud9 and Coast. So this is them warming up probably in the back room, trying to get that bot lane synergy going, trying to get everybody practiced up because Keith is subbing in for Piglet. But um, currently he's showing up 7-2-2 two, and two with 209 CS, doing very, very well. Highest CS in the game by one. Not anymore, damn it. Of course Oriana right when I say that. So it looks like they're not going to be giving the red buff over to the Graves. They fancy it more on the Riven. I'm not sure if I agree with that decision per se, but um, I feel like the Graves has had a little bit of a rough game and needs to get back into it somehow. And I think giving him the red buff might allow him to actually be able to kite people around a little bit. But he could just get blown up very easily by the uh, the Tibbers Corky combo. We'll just have to see how that plays out. Still have a few minutes on the Dragon. Baron is available, but I don't believe that anybody's going for that. X Special going to take a ton of damage from Rumble. I don't know if X Special can necessarily get out of this. The Tibbers being used, though. Rumble taking a ton of damage. X Special just trying to live. Both of them go down, but it looks like Corky's going to try to jump in onto this Orianna. A lot of damage coming down, and that is going to be a double kill. Can Corky make this a triple kill? Cassiopeia is now here for a little bit of help. Not enough damage. The Great Monsoon coming out of the Janna to dis disengage this fight. That definitely would have been a triple kill and possibly a quadra kill for Liquid Keith if they were able to continue chasing on that one. But um, sadly, nothing else came from that one. But with everybody being so low and two people being down, Keith is just going to be able to push this one with the Cassiopeia. And that is going to be the sixth turret of the game to the two of the blue team. 45.2k to 39.3k. Very big difference here. But here comes the Riven. Cassiopeia does have her ultimate, so it's going to do a lot of damage to the Riven, but Riven with his ult, sorry, her ultimate activated. The exhaust coming out of the Janna, going to be enough to pick up that Cassiopeia, but here comes Keith once again using his Valkyrie, trying to get in there, gets a kill onto the Janna. Keith is now going to check over here and try to take down the Riven, but once again, Riven is quite strong, but Keith it might very well be stronger. He's currently trying to deal with the Graves. That is going to be a kill. Legendary Keith getting a double kill there. And Riven is now going to be able to use her mobility to run away from this one. They are going to take down a pink ward in their jungle. And I just think that the red team is doing a great job of holding their own against this uh, wombo combo-like team. Not grouping up for it. Not allowing the combos to happen. 
and Keith is just doing such a great job of positioning and roaming around and getting the kills and picks where they need it. Dragon is going to be up in 40 seconds. This would be the third dragon for the red team. So I think they're probably going to position themselves around that dragon. They do already have some decent ward coverage, as we can see from the pink ward in the dragon pit and also the wards that are surrounding the dragon. There is a current pink ward up there. They're probably going to clear that prior to trying the dragon, but everybody's going to go back and buy right now. Probably sitting on quite a bit of gold. 2,800 on Keith. What the hell are you going to do with that, buddy? The Chilling Smite going down onto the Rumble, not enough to pick him off, and this might have put the, um, the Lee Sin in a little bit of a bad scenario. So there we go, it's just going to have to safeguard over, but now he's low and the Dragon is coming up in 4 seconds. Rumble is going to go down, a great Q from the Lee Sin, following up on that one after the Cassiopeia had already done so much damage. The Tibber is coming down from Annie, the Flash Tibbers is going to be enough to pick up the Janna, and now they can probably take down this Dragon with not much concern because Cassiopeia is just absolutely annihilating the thing. And that is going to be the third dragon of this game, while Liquid Keith is just going to be up here bullying the mid laner Orianna. I don't really know what the blue team can do to get back into this game, because right now, they are so far behind. And the item difference, especially on the AD carries, Infinity Edge, Trinity Force, Bloodthirster, plus the Sork Boots on Corky, versus just the Infinity Edge and the Zeal on the Graves. It is a world of difference. It's basically like it's a 6v4 right now because Corky is just so strong. Riven is now coming from the back line. The Valkyrie is available for Corky, but as we can see, he just he just absolutely annihilates the Riven. Like, she was barely alive for any time. Look at the chunk damage onto the Graves. Looks like Keith is just getting so aggressive here, chunking down the, uh, the Janna, going down so, so quickly. Could this be a possible quadra kill? The flash coming out of the Corky, not going to be enough to take him down. The shockwave is now down. Part of their wombo combo is gone. Liquid Keith picking up another kill. Looks like they're just going to jump in onto the graves. The flash is being used, trying to kick him back, but aren't going to get him on this go around. But Keith is now going to just life seal up with that bloodthirster, and he's going to be back at full health. This is going to be another kill for Keith. 15, 2, and 2. He is currently legendary. He's absolutely unstoppable. I really hope to see Keith bring this Corky into the LCS because he has been doing a world of damage on this Corky. And he's been playing it incredibly well, knowing when to be aggressive, knowing when to use his Valkyrie to back out. It's been a very, very good play. But Cassiopeia barely surviving, but the shutdown bonus going onto the Riven from the Lee Sin, using that ultimate. A double kill for the Riven. And definitely not the person you want to get kills on, but Corky is now just going to have to back off there, use that Valkyrie defensively, and get the hell out of there. But what a push, getting the inhibitor turret, getting the inhibitor, and an additional Nexus turret. Uh, you can't really complain about how this game is going if you're on the red team. 27 to 18, 55.3 to 45.3. Pretty insane. We've reached that 10k gold lead. So we're just going to have to see if the uh, the blue team is going to be able to make uh, any type of a comeback. Um, 18 to 27 is definitely... It, it's kind of demoralizing when you look up at the scores uh, to see something like that. It's really hard to kind of keep yourself at focus and in the game when you know you're so far behind and when you have to try to figure out how the hell you deal with Liquid Keith, who is just absolutely dominating right now. Not entirely sure how you deal with him because the thing about somebody like a Corky is that it's it's so difficult to lock him down because of that Valkyrie. If he just saves it and makes sure that he uses it at an appropriate time, when he has his flash available and his heal, he's just got so many ways of escaping that I really don't think you're going to catch him in the wombo combo that you want to set up. So right now, Lee Sin missing pretty much everything on this rumble. The stun coming out from X Special, and now here comes Keith. This is going to be so much damage. Look at that. It's almost like a three shot onto that rumble. Absolutely unreal. And that's with a Rylai's Crystal Scepter, mind you. So it's not even the squishiest rumble you could see, and Keith is still just absolutely annihilating him. I would not be surprised to see them just push down this uh, second, t sorry, this uh, inhibitor turret on the top side. Uh, Maokai is just split pushing in the bot lane because he does have his teleport available so he could very easily join a fight. Um, the one thing though is that if Keith dies, um, he is really the only fed person on this red team. Um, so it's kind of a good thing for the blue team that it is only really this Corky because if you kill him, uh, you pretty much stop all the damage coming out from this red team. Um, it's really just the Lee Sin who has a couple kills, six kills with two deaths. 
But Maokai gonna TP in here, and they are just gonna back off completely. That is just gonna be one free turret and a free inhibitor. Second inhibitor of the game going for... Oh, the Timbers coming down. A great Timbers landing on two people. The Graves and the Orianna, exactly who you want to have killed. The... Sorry, the ultimate coming down from the Cassiopeia, but a four-man shockwave. It would have been amazing if Orianna actually had some damage to deal with those four people, but sadly just has no damage whatsoever, so the shockwave was just really nothing at all. It looks like they're just going to start poking them inside the fountain, trying to deal some damage to them and just keep them in that base, but it looks like they are going to try to end this game now. Annie, at least, is trying to end the game. Everybody else is kind of trolling around a little bit. So you still even see this at the... Uh, Oh, but here we go. They are going to go for the dive. That's going to be a dead Graves. Maokai going down for that one, but giving Cassiopeia another kill. Cassiopeia going down to the Riven ultimate, but Riven is going to go down. Keith is still alive, and that is probably going to be the end of this game. The minions are just going to take the Nexus down, and Keith jumping in is going to die. Not even going to die. What a hero is Keith. 316 farm over the 199 of that Graves, ending at 18, 2, and 5. Annie X special, 4, 6, and 15, having a great Annie support game. So hopefully you guys did enjoy that high yellow commentary. I know I haven't done them very frequently. Let me know if you want me to continue doing commentaries. I love doing them, and I love shoutcasting. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys want to see. Press that like button if you did enjoy the commentary. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not already. I also have Twitter and things like that if you guys want to follow me on there. But if you guys did enjoy the video, sure to press that like button. It definitely helps me out a lot. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you guys in the next video.